Hey, how are you doing? Hey, how are y'all doing? Good. I can finally Good. talk. You've been asking me questions <laughs> all week, and I've been low commenting you, so the matter's resolved. So I'm able to discuss this with you a little bit and answer any questions you have. Do you feel like the judge sentencing to him a year in in jail uh, shows that he understands the seriousness of this charge and kind of what this needs to stand for? I think so, and I think that it uh, reassures the public that a message will be sent when people engage in this kind of behavior. People need to be held accountable, and it isn't enough that they just lose their job. That's what should happen at a minimum, is lose your job. To say that that's enough punishment, that's ridiculous. So I, uh, I, I think uh, letting people know when you betray the public trust in the fashion that this man did that you go to prison. That's what needs to happen. You talked about his clean record, how that really shouldn't even be a factor in this sentencing. Yes, uh, yeah, everybody has a clean record who's elected for sheriff. They wouldn't be elected for sheriff if they walked in with the rap sheet. So to say that you have a clean record uh, is, no, is no mitigation for misconduct in office. Like I told the judge, nobody gets prosecuted for misconduct second offense. It just doesn't happen. You don't get into office after you've been convicted of misconduct. You said that this was a very taxing case that Sledge spent thousands of dollars on this. Take, take us through, really, how much was put into this case over... Well, first of all, I neglected to say what an outstanding job that the state law enforcement division did. Um, I mentioned in my closing argument that nobody hates a dirty cop more than a good one. The vast majority of police officers who patrol our streets, answer these calls, and come out to help citizens are wonderful, hardworking, committed people who really, truly respect what their badge stands for and work every day to do honor to it. So when they have somebody like this come in and, and do the things that this man did, it is, it's just deflating and demoralizing to those men and women because they think, now the public thinks we're all like this. They're not. They're great people. And SLED is, a, is the first example that I'd point to. They work tirelessly to chase down every lead and talk to anybody who might have some information about this. And I just can't convince uh, SLED enough. And you were very passionate in your closing <laughs> arguments. Your fellow counsel were very passionate in their cross-examination of Lewis. I mean, I know that's your job. You're trying to get a point across to the jury but did that passion really come from somewhere deep inside of you? I am a member of the criminal justice system just like Will Lewis is. And what he did caused the public's faith in the system that I belong to to be eroded. So yes, this was to the, to the extent that, that it impacted what the people think about prosecutors and law enforcement. Absolutely, I want the public to understand most people are not Will Lewis. Most people are good, decent, hardworking, try to get it right. Uh, they spend their days trying to do justice. And, and when somebody like this does something like that, absolutely, it impacts all of us. And would you have done this without Savannah Neighbors? you and your team throughout the whole trial and getting ready for all of this? Well, it's been, you know, in many ways, it's just like any other case. We marshal the evidence. We try to figure out the best way to present it in a sensible fashion so the jury can understand it. Um, but, but I'll tell you one thing that has impacted me that I, I've really been distressed is, is the way some people seem to treat Savannah neighbors. And, and I'll say that um, I've been working with her a long time. You know, if, if the people of Greenville want to do me any kindness or do me any favor, or thank me in any way, don't do it for me. I would ask you to look uh, at Savannah Neighbors for what she is. She's a victim of this man. She's a good woman. And if she hadn't done what she did, you'd still have that guy, the guy you saw with the evidence you heard, the tapes that were played, you'd still have that guy in charge of your uh, public safety. Savannah Neighbors is owed a debt of gratitude. She should be thanked for what she did. And some people seem to, you know, have, have differing, differing opinions about that. Please believe me when I tell you she's a good person and she deserves your gratitude. The judge kept saying so-called affair like during his sentencing. He kept saying so-called affair when he was sentencing Lewis. Do you think he sees, you know, what you and what Savannah see this for? I don't know what he, I don't know what he thinks, but I mean, uh, uh, to me, uh, this evidence is, is compelling and, and leads to one conclusion, and one conclusion only. Savannah Neighbors was victimized by Will Lewis. You, you mentioned how rare it is for cases like this to actually make it to a jury trial. Can you speak to what that indicates to you that it has come this far and, and required this result? Well, I, I said that this is the first one that I've tried because most of the people that I deal with uh, with these kinds of charges, when we uh, have enough evidence to go forward, 
Um, most of them accept responsibility. They realize what they did. And, uh, and of course, uh, Mr. Lewis, he had those tapes. He knew what our evidence was, and uh, he exercised his right to a trial, which is completely within his rights. And I would not, uh, you know, the system of justice is built on that, and that he's he's got a right to a trial, and he got one, and now he's been convicted and sentenced. Do you believe, Mr. Lewis, when he talked about accepting responsibility at the end? I don't know what uh, Mr. Lewis thinks. I mean, all I can judge Mr. Lewis by is his works. And um, uh, I said what I said to the judge, and I'd stand on that. Now can that this is wrapped up, how you said you had time away from your daughter, that your team has put in a lot of work into this. Why is it worth to stand up here today, talk talk to us, and have this wrapped up? How does that make you feel I want the public. Stuff? I want the public to know that, you know, there are, the most people are, you know, the Kevin Brackets and the Willie Thompsons and the Leslie Robinsons, the April Sykes, who's standing over there. Um, those folks are the ones who really make up the criminal justice system. And yes, we're all exhausted. We've slept less than four hours a night for the last, you know, six or seven days. We were here all last week interviewing witnesses and preparing this case. But we're we're very tired, and we're gratified for uh, the result that we got because uh, uh, we our mission was uh, to leave Greenville in the rearview mirror knowing that Will Lewis was never going to step into the office of sheriff again. Can you talk to us a little bit about that process that happens now to actually remove him? Is he removed, you know, now as soon as that sentence is handed down? Talk about that a little. The sentencing sheet and the certified indictment with the conviction on it have been uh, sent to Columbia to Governor McMaster, who signs an order re officially removing him from office and setting in motion the process for his replacement by the people. And do you have any words for anyone who plans to run for the position of the Greenville County Sheriff, you know, when that election does come up again? Well, I don't have any words for them. I mean, I would have some words for the people of Greenville and for the people of South Carolina. Um, spend more time vetting your candidates, you know? I mean, how many times do you walk into a ballot booth and you look down at these names and you know nothing about these people? These people have enormous influence over your lives. People spend more time shopping for a washer and dryer. They spend more time vetting their products that they buy than they do their public officials. Take the time to look into who these people are and ask yourself, is this the kind of person that we want to be sheriff or sitting on a school board or whatever? I mean, this is your government, and, and if you want quality people, you want decent folks to run it, then you need to take the time to do it because you're the ones that put them there. Do you feel that this one-year sentence is justice for the people of Greenville? I think it is. I think it's justice for the people of Greenville. I think it is also uh, a huge relief to the people of the Greenville County Sheriff's Office. They can start moving forward now. Anything, Anything else you want to add? <laughs> All of the questioners now. I'm just the talker. So what, if you I, do, have... I do have one more question for you. There was a lot made with the coming to a verdict yesterday, the time it took, and uh, what they were reviewing. Could you kind of speak to the complications or maybe, maybe the confusion that they had in that sure. process? Sure. Um, well, there's a statutory law against misconduct in office, and then there is a, uh, a, a, a common law, which is common law is just basically it's handed down from, it's not passed by a legislature, but it's, it's accepted law that has been handed down through the years. Um, it is confusing, uh, and, and the law is confusing. There isn't a lot of case law in South Carolina to look to to help people understand um, how to apply this law in a criminal case. Maybe what the legislature should do is reach out to, there are many different independent groups out there who are devoted to ethical government. Um, reach out to some of those guys. They've probably got model laws that are strong and clear and straightforward, um, and, and look at giving us one law that uh, is clear easily understandable because you know when you're sitting at home and you're thinking about it, everybody knows it's common sense what you should do and you shouldn't do as a public official you don't need somebody to tell you that you you can't use the power of your office and the resources of your office to try to have an affair with one of your employees this doesn't you know require I mean how much does that need to be explained to somebody but it shouldn't be that confusing for a jury to figure out where in the law does that say that you know, it should be more straightforward. So I, I would love to see, uh, you know, straightforward uh, legislative action on this that makes it clear to every public official what they can and can't do and makes it clear to any jury that is called upon to uh, decide whether their actions were ethical uh, that, that what this person did was wrong. Do you know where he will serve his time and also would they make, with his prior employment, 
Do you have to do anything for him in that position? For I, I think he's going to be taken to the South Carolina Department of Corrections and screened just like any other criminal. Um, he will, uh, you know, be processed through just like any other criminal, and I imagine that they will take steps to ensure his safety because I'm, I'm sure he is in danger, and I don't want him to get hurt. It's not that kind of situation. They need to look out for his safety. So, did um, turning down the plea deal earlier for Lewis? Do you think that had anything to do with with the sentencing in this particular situation? Well, that's one of the dangers of going to trial is that uh, people get to see a lot more about it than they do at a guilty plea. Guilty pleas take, um, you know, half an hour at the most. Uh, you know, this sort of thing takes days and days and days, and all the details come out, and you get a more complete picture of what this person actually did. And as a consequence, uh, uh, you get a, a, a stiffer sentence when they when they find out all the gory details like this judge did. Last question for you: Has this case? I know the judge had said that out of all of his years on the bench, that he has not tried a case like this. Has this case been different from you for you, and has it taught you anything? It's been different in that it was a sheriff. You know, and like I told the judge, sheriffs, solicitors, judges, we stand at, at a special place in the hierarchy of public officials because the public invests in us so much power and authority over their daily lives. And, and so when we, when we fail in that regard, we, we should be held. Uh, to a higher standard, and, and, and it should be more severe uh, what happens because of, of, you know, we have control over people's liberties and their reputation, and that's uh, something that needs to be taken very seriously. And I am curious, too, what did you make of Mrs. Lewis being up there and sitting next to, to Mr. Lewis during this trial? At the very beginning, when jury selection was going on, we had, uh, we thought, a great many jurors that were going to fill the courtroom, and so we were concerned that there wouldn't be enough space. So at, at the outset, it was agreed that, you know, she could remain in the courtroom and sit in front of the rail. Um, afterwards, she remained up there. I, I don't know if you recall, but I, I said I don't think that's appropriate, and I asked the court to have her sit back uh, in, in the gallery, and, and the judge declined, and that, that's his call. Anything else you want to add? No, I think that's it. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. We appreciate thank it. Thank you so much for your time. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Very it was, much. Um, thank you. Yeah. Well,